All right, so if I want to get a little variation into my poster at the end, what I did is I created a layer of just the line art. And that allows me, I call it touch-ups, it allows me to use my magic wand and select just individual areas that I can touch it up. And instead of using your standard paintbrush, this one, you know, you see it will only paint in that one area I've selected. I can use some of the shaped brushes in different ways. I like this one. It's just like a slightly asymmetrical, noisy brush shape. And then I can go to brush settings. And I can play with the tip dynamics. I can set the control not to be pressure sensitive for opacity, but to be pressure sensitive for pin pressure, right? And the two of them together is a little tricky to use, so I usually choose one or the other. But then I'll vary the size. So that just means it won't always be the exact same size. And it won't always, this is very important to me, it will change its angle as I'm using it. So now, just that difference makes the brush like that which is great for digital painting or if you want to simulate some traditional media. You have scatter dynamics where you can actually turn any brush shape into an airbrush that scatters like that. And you can control it so it's still fairly controllable on like a smaller scale, like that, right? So those can be good for touch-ups. This is actually quite a nice brush. Transfer is about how opaque individual strokes are. It's like opacity jitter. And I like to have a lot of the flow vary through, through touch-up brushes and have the opacity vary a little bit as well. What's the difference between flow and opacity? It just has to do with the edge control on the individual marks. And we can control those based on the flow jitter based on pin pressure so that it's stronger and more opaque as you press harder. And then color dynamics is something I don't usually use, but it's a lot of fun to play with. It takes your foreground and background color and it can jitter between them. So between whatever my foreground color is, and the white of the background. I can also do hue jitter, which I don't do, but if you want just kind of random colors to go in there, you can play with that. And then saturation jitter can be kind of nice. Sometimes it's more intense, sometimes it's less intense. All of these give you less control of the brush, but give you more interesting textures. So let me try this brush out. Here I can still affect the size, but as soon as you get from anything that's not a symmetrical brush shape, like a circle, you're going to lose the ability to change the hardness. And instead you change the hardness with like transfer settings, op opacity settings, things like that. But it allows you to make brushes with different kinds of edges. And I want that kind of textural effect, right? So I can also affect flow and opacity in the brush settings up here. So I'm going to keep it fairly large. And I'm just going to touch it up a little bit. These That bright white within there. And then I can use my magic wand, select in here, and do the same thing on this side. You know, over the top of my coloring underneath. So it's like a full spectrum textured way to augment anything that looks less than, than finished. If I hold down option, I can steal other colors. I can use my magic wand because I don't want to accidentally touch up or paint over the top of my line art. And I can give a little bit of that texture in here. Now, I always tend to overdo it. 
So that's why I put it on its own layer. So then I can play with opacity. So I'm just going to break up all of this a little bit. I'm using these kind of purples. And now that I've put some in, this is all in my touch-ups, right? Then I could, I can dodge and burn it. So I can brighten it on the mid-tones, nice and big, less than 30 exposure, and kind of brighten those touch-ups here, brighten them right in there. I don't need to worry about the magic wand anymore because I'm kind of touching it everywhere. And then I can also burn them. Same thing. Nice and big, soft-edged, exposure of less than 30. And that just gives me a little bit more texture variation in there. I can also, also erase from this layer. But ways you can touch areas up that you're not so fond of. Right, just by painting directly on top of them. I can always use my eraser and I can use various brushes on my eraser as well. And set those brush settings with the eraser. So you have lots and lots of options. But I'm just going to use a basic eraser at a low opacity. Now, I said you don't want to go over your line art accidentally, right? But what if you do want to go over your line art? And you don't like your black line. If we go to the slides of our introduction to digital coloring from assignment five, color holds, remember, are when you can put something over the top of your line art. So imagine this illustration, which is basic duotone illustration, mostly hard edge duotone. But imagine it if the lasso was just outlined in black. It would be a white lasso outlined in black. It wouldn't have any of that feeling. So what this does is it replaces the black line of just the lasso with a, a glow effect, with a color, with orange, and then glowing yellow. So if there's anything that is like that for you, let's say my character's hair. I could select that from the line art layer I made, right? I'll grab a little too much and then just subtract from it. I'm going to duplicate just that. Command J. Come on, you can do it. And then you can play with effects on that. So. I can do a stroke, right? But I don't want a stroke effect. I want to replace the color. So the easiest way to do that is a color overlay. And I'll, I'll turn the color on underneath so you can see the effect this has. But it's just on the line art around the head. So the one to use is color overlay. And instead of black, which the line art already is, I'm going to pick a new color. There you see it with that kind of greenish gray. Uh, but let's, let's pick kind of a warm, a warm color for her hair. Something like that. Replaced all the black. And then I just have to go in and erase all the lines I don't want it to change, which can be a bit of a pain with all these overlaps. Now, what if I wanted, wanted it to look like her hair was actually glowing like a magic lasso? Then I would use more than just the color overlay, I could use things like, I really want to make it glowing. I, I'll change the color to something a lot brighter, like white, right? 
but then I would use what's called outer glow and really spread the glow of it outwards. Now what's neat about this is it will affect the line art underneath. So now that hair is really glowing, right? And I can just delete away from where I don't want it to glow. It's like a firefly effect. But it's going to radiate outwards. onto other layers. Now if you want to cut it down so you can control that, then you can rasterize, right click and rasterize the layer style and then just erase it because then they're just pixels. But let me play with that color overlay a little bit. I'm worried that it still says saving there, but just keep pushing forward. I like to make it noisy. That gives you that kind of texture like dissolve. It could spread down. And you can even fill your line art with a gradient. You know, it doesn't need to be just a solid color. But I know PhotoP is a little slow with gradients. So I'll do something like this. And then if I rasterize the layer style with that glow, see, it's all right here. And then I can just use my eraser and clean it up. Oh, I'm in the wrong layer. There we go. Wherever I need it cleaned up. I can also use my lasso for better precision, or I can use my tablet. So that's, those are color holds. They're called color holds because the printer needs to erase the black from the, uh, the black film work, which always gets printed on top, so that the colors from the, the layers of ink underneath can show through. So you're holding it for color. And you see this way I can erase the glow of it as well, that kind of textured glow. So if I don't think that makes sense here, I can just erase it here and just keep it on the outer edges. I can also have a soft edged eraser. Now what about these outside shapes? Maybe I want those to be a different color hold color. So all I need to do, so I've already rasterized them, I can just select them with my lasso, duplicate them, and then just play with hue saturation, shift them to a different color. I think that works. I can also play with adjustments because the glow has now made my whites less white, right? And I can adjust their midtones. Make that kind of pop out a little bit. I can even layer it with, whoops, let's click on this layer it with dissolve turned on with the warms underneath so you get a nice dissolve between the different color holds on the outside there 